Hey everyone, Adam Shar here from Bravura Media Company. Today we've got some more maps for you. We're going to be showing and displaying vintage maps of Irish settlement, uh, immigration to the United States. It's going to be kind of a, a census maps, a lot of census maps. We're going to be giving a lot of information on that. We're going to be talking about Irish immigration history. And we're doing this all because we have St. Patrick's Day coming up. And this is kind of our uh, contribution to the history of Irish immigration uh, and, and uh, Irish culture. And we, we just kind of want to do some sides of genealogy and history. So if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, we do videos on on uh, vintage maps throughout the entire world, on Irish history, different cultures. If you like history and maps, you got to subscribe to us. We upload videos all the time. That being said, let's go into the history of Irish immigration in the United States, and then we're going to kind of zoom in and explore this old map. Uh, this is a map from... Uh, uh, 1880, and it's gonna it's gonna show you the the I guess Irish hubs throughout the United States. We also have another map that kind of a cookie cutter to this one, different style. Um, so uh, getting started with the brief uh, history of Irish immigration, starting around the 17th century, uh, colonial settlers coming from the Ulster province. I hope I pronounced that right of Ireland, Ulster. Um, uh, they were kind of a mixed bag of immigrants. Uh, and this term comes up a lot, Scotch-Irish, uh, and it's in reference to settlers coming from Ireland. This province, the Ulster prov province, uh, essentially was a mixed bag because you had British uh, tenant farmers, you had Scotland, Scottish uh, tenant farmers, and you had Irish, uh, people native to Ireland, all farming in this province. And Britain really forced... Uh, the kind of blending in, in this this province. So that's where this term comes, Scotch-Irish, that's often used uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, it's this blending, this blending uh, of coming from this province. And these were the first settlers coming uh, into the Americas. So we're going to get back into that uh, further. I got In my notes, I talk about uh, Scotch-Irish, the kind of uh, the beginnings of it. Uh, moving on, though. 250 uh, of these mixed immigrants uh, migrated to, to the U.S. Uh, or the Americas in the 1700s. 20,000 of these, uh, 250,000, uh, had an affiliation with the Catholic Church. So that's a pretty small percentage. The other flip side, obviously, would be the Protestant, uh, uh, Scotch-Irish, I guess you could refer to that. Uh, Catholics uh, later grew to about 40,000, which... Uh, was about 1.6% of the 2.5 million population in America in 1775. So a very, very small percentage uh, of people were Catholic a, a year before the American Revolution. Uh, the Irish immigrants uh, of this colonial area, era uh, participated in large numbers during the, uh, the American Revolution. So, I mean, that small percentage... Uh, which was 40,000 people, they, they almost 40,000 people uh, participated in the American Revolution. This is, this is fascinating. Uh, it actually is backed by historical reference uh, because uh, they actually have evidence that a British general testified in the House of Commons, and he essentially said, quote, unquote, half the, the rebel Continental Army uh, were from Ireland. He, he was essentially saying half the, uh, the, the rebels were Irish and from Ireland, which is ironic because it's coming from one of their own territories. Ireland was essentially controlled by Britain, and half of their claimed you know, land is, is going to war against them. So that's, that's pretty fascinating to me. Um, uh, moving to the, the Ulster uh, province and the immigrants, uh, we, we talked about the uh the scotch irish uh it was uh, it was really until the great potato famine of the 1840s that some of the protestant irish began to refer themselves uh as scott uh, scotch irish Th that we're getting back to the scotch irish Th that section as we said there was a blending between the the three groups english scottish and irish 
um, they in the 1840s they want to differentiate themselves from the Catholics, and this is where the Scotch Irish term came really in in influx uh, so, because they want to differentiate themselves. That's uh, interesting, I think as well. Uh, two factors largely led to the overwhelming growth of Irish immigration in America. Uh, the 1820s saw a vast, I mean, major, major uh, outcry and demand for labor uh, in, in canal building, lumbering, uh, and civil construction in the northeastern United States. And we'll go into this map and we'll show you exactly what's, what's going on. Uh, 20 years later, uh, about the 1840s, as we said before, we talked about the Great Potato Famine. Uh, it really catapulted the, the growth of, of Irish populations in the United States because not only was there opportunity and work, but families, people wanted to feed their families, lack of food. So, I mean, that was just 10x uh, the, the, the immigration surge and also other cultures uh, and, and ethnic backgrounds were coming to the United States, so it made it very inviting. So, I mean, that that 40 year span between eight or 20 year span, uh, 1820s to 1840s. I mean, I mean, it was just an Irish influx right then. Uh, a lot of the uh, the Irish, uh, a lot of the cities uh, grew. I guess. Uh, in, in city areas, in urban areas, because they wanted to, it's kind of interesting, they wanted to create communities in these cities. They already had kind of established communities in New York, Boston, all, all these ported towns. Uh, and it's often because they, I guess it was kind of like a support system for these new immigrants coming there for protection because they're going to a new, I mean, they're going across an ocean to a whole new land. So it'd be nice to see, you know, if you were an immigrant, you're going across somewhere you've never been before. You'd want to know where you're going. You know, you want to have people with your same ethnicity and feel more comfortable and, and protected in that kind of environment with that community. Uh, another reason, that's just one of the reasons. Another reason was, and this is definitely another factor. These immigrants, literally had no money they got to these ports and they couldn't go further inland because they had no money so they kind of just said you know what i gotta work i gotta i gotta get here and just settle and and nose the grindstone and it makes some money and then maybe later on um we can we can develop more inland in the united in america and we see evidence in this in this map i mean we today we know chicago has a large a pretty significant Irish population, but on this map in 1880, about 40 years after the Great Potato Famine, we don't see a lot of development in Chicago. We'll go further into that. Um, but uh, just to label all the cities uh, that had large Irish populations, obviously Boston, Philadelphia, New York, big one, uh, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Chicago, St. Louis, St. Paul, and then later on San Francisco and L.A. So, I uh, just want to put that out there. Very, 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 very interesting facts, background into the Irish immigration to the U.S. Let's dive into this map. We're, let's point out some aspects we talked about. This map is from 1880. And uh, if we zoom in, obviously, let me zoom out. We can see the concentration. The darker portions of the key are, are displaying. Here's the key. This is 10% uh, of the population and over are of Irish descent. And the, the scaling downs are obviously a lot less, uh, 6 to 10, 3 to 6, 1.5. So we get kind of an idea that over 10% of the population is Irish at the time. So, I mean, if we look at the map, we zoom back. I mean, look at Boston. Look at Massachusetts. I mean, just overwhelmingly uh, Irish presence. And we go along to New York. It's this, it's this New England hub right here. I mean, just major, major. And, and if you think about it, we, we talked about earlier, uh, a lot of the labor demands were because of construction, civil construction, lumber. Um, oh, what was the other thing? Uh, canal building. So, I mean, if, if you really look at this, lumber was really big in the New England area, especially New Hampshire. Uh, Massachusetts, this kind of, a lot of work being done. Certainly, um, the United States was going through, uh, 
I don't, I, well, not really industrialization. Uh, that's kind of the beginning of industrialization, but certainly it was growing significantly uh, around the time. And uh, cities were being essentially growing vertically. And uh, I mean, obviously the, the major cities, uh, Boston, New York, I mean, those were the, the predominant big ones on the Eastern United States. So we talked about Chicago, right? Look at Chicago. I mean, today we we know that Chicago has, I mean, an outstanding uh, St. Patrick's Day uh, celebration. But I mean, in 1880, uh, I would say underdeveloped compared to Massachusetts and the East Coast. So I'm sure that that growth really happened a lot later. I mean, if if you look in the in the western portion, in Montana, this is a little bit confusing seeing these splotchiness of Irish. I mean, let's look at our ratio of Irish total population. It gives us by state, Rhode Island, obviously a New England state. I mean, just through the roof in Irish population. I this is per capita, I believe. Yeah. Oh, this is this shows us the numbers of population. So thirty-five thousand. Massachusetts. Uh, 226. Look at New York. I mean, I mean, yeah, five five hundred thousand, pretty damn significant. Uh, it's showing us this is based on percentage. These lines. So these are all New England states. Nevada. Look at Nevada having a. That's quite interesting. I did not know about Nevada having a. I guess per capita percentage of 8.3% in 1880. That's pretty significant. That's pretty significant. I thought that was interesting. Huh. Um, here's New Hampshire in the top 20. Vermont, top 20. So it's a lot of New England states. Really, they were coming uh, in boatloads. I mean, this was the entry point. You had Ellis Island in New York, and then you had Boston. So it really stemmed from there. Um you look at North Carolina, Florida, some of the, the lowest percentage states. So uh, let's look at Illinois. Illinois is significant on there. I mean, it's in the top 20, but it, it, it's significant today, to say the least. So uh, very cool map that we have in our possession. Let's go. We have another map. It's going to kind of show us the same thing. It's illustrated in green. And this is really not showing the whole United States. It's showing the 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 eastern seaboard, really, and parts of Chicago. Uh, this is a 1872 illustration of Irish populations, and the over 15% is in the dark green, uh, 6 to 15, 3 to 6. I mean, look at the Boston area. Significant. And we've got that road. Remember we talked about Rhode Island? That's significant, too. Connecticut, we could see New Jersey's got uh, New York, this area right around, <clears throat> probably Jersey City area, part of Long Island, lots of Irish population. You know, and another aspect, we talked about the American Revolution, and I just want to throw this out there, uh, a, a lot of the battles fought during the American Revolution, right in, the, obviously, the New England, I mean, I wouldn't say all of them, but a lot of influence during the American Revolution happened uh, in the uprising in New England. So the the conception that a significant population uh, of the Continental Army rebelling against the English was Irish, I mean, makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense that they, they helped fuel the war. So this is just more evidence right there. So, I mean, look, if we go over to Chicago, where Chicago is, I mean, it's, it's somewhat light. You know, and even like St. Louis, look at St. Louis. St. Louis ha uh, celebrates today, uh, St. Patrick's Day, very, very uh, buoyantly. And uh, we can see a, a, a cohort, a population burst right there. So uh, definitely, I love these maps. Uh, we really get a feel for history and information pertaining to Irish immigration. And uh, I just wanted to leave it at that. I, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this video, and I, I hope you've learned something. Uh, from it and uh, please stay tuned subscribe to our channel we're going to be doing videos like these all the time we're going to be talking about history we're going to be celebrating holidays on saint patrick's day i will do a video drinking i hope i'm i might try to get some green uh 
color dye. I'll drink some green beer with you. Uh, maybe we can talk about our favorite beers on St. Patrick's Day. Leave some comments. Um, we have a very fun channel here. Uh, we're, not, we're not only about history. We also you know, like to have some fun. So definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, leave a comment below. Share this video. St. Patrick's Day is coming up. We're going to be doing more St. Patty's Day videos. Uh, and I will talk to everyone soon. Uh, have a great day. Take care. Bye now.